guys, thanks so much for all the questions that you've been putting below our videos. Um, some brilliant ones come in. Sadek Khalifa asks, why do we get nervous? Uh, Nico Griffiths wants to know, what's the worst that can happen when you click your joints? And Alex Signy wonders, how do songs get stuck in your mind? Some really brilliant questions. And the one I'm gonna to tackle today comes in from Nilesh Ketrapal who asks, how does a touchscreen work? Ah oh yes, the smartphone. As ubiquitous as a big beard on a hipster. Yes, it knows tomorrow's weather. And yes, it can give you instant access to funny cat videos. And yes, it probably contains a whole load of text messages from your mum that you just never find the time to reply to. Sorry, mum. But the thing for me that's really impressive about a smartphone is the touchscreen technology. Before the introduction of the iPhone, different phones used different types of touchscreen tech. One that was very popular was called resistive technology. Quite simply, your finger would push two layers together. The top layer is called a resistive layer and the bottom layer is a conductive layer. And when the two of them were pushed together, that would change the local voltage and it'd be able to work out where you touched. However, after the man with the black roll neck jumper took to the stage and introduced his take on smartphone technology, pretty much all the other smartphone manufacturers switched to using one single type of touchscreen tech, capacitive touch technology. Right, let's take a closer look. Let's peel back the layers of the screen. The top layer is the protective cover. In modern smartphones, that's pretty much gonna be Gorilla Glass. Now, that's not glass made of or by gorillas, but it is ruddy strong. But for all its technological might, it's essentially made from sand, which is exactly the same way that we have been making glass since way back, probably at least the ancient Egyptian time. So you take your sand, which is silicon dioxide, you mix it with a few other chemicals and you melt it down. The glass you get is known as aluminosilicate. Then you need to give that a wash in a potassium bath. All it essentially does is it, is it rips out the sodium ions and replaces them with potassium ions. And that compresses and strengthens the glass. Voila, Gorilla Glass. Now underneath that protective layer is where it gets interesting. There are two layers that are covered in electrodes that are thinner than a human hair. One of those layers contains what's known as the driving lines that carry the current. And the other one contains the sensing lines that sense the amount of current and charge being carried by the driving lines. They're at perpendicular, they're right angles to each other. Now, when you move your electrically conducting stubby finger down towards the screen, it changes the amount of charge in those driving lines. When you actually touch the screen, some of that charge jumps up to your finger. And it's the job of the sensing lines to pick up where that charge has changed on the driving lines. Which is why you can't operate your smartphone wearing gloves, unless they're fancy smancy conducting gloves. Because it relies on you being able to pull the charge away from that layer. There's a processor that processes all this as well. It looks at where the current has dropped off in those lines. It strips out the background noise and it works out whether you've touched one place, two places, or maybe whether you're actually moving across the screen. It's the brain of the whole thing. Then the bottom layer is the LCD, the liquid crystal display. Now, if you're interested in how your phone's resolution compares to HD or 4K, it's well worth having a watch of Matt's Pixel Wars video, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this one. Now, that's pretty much it. Although, if I'm honest, the design that I've been outlining is a bit of an old design. There have been a few improvements with the more recent smartphones. You've got two upgrades, on-cell and in-cell. On-cell essentially moves the touchscreen technology up onto that top glass layer. Samsung have been doing this for a while with their Super AMOLED screens, the Galaxy S3 and the Galaxy Nexus. Then you've got in-cell touch, as it's known. This was first seen in the iPhone 5S. The idea is that you move the touchscreen tech inside that top glass layer. Now, of course, both of these upgrades means the production process is trickier but what it makes is a thinner phone, which means you get a smaller saggy bit in your jeans, but also you get better color saturation as the light doesn't have to pass through as many layers. 
Another interesting fact for you, the first capacitive touchscreen was actually used in CERN in 1976. So there you go, Nilesh, a quick romp through touchscreen technology for you. If anyone else has a question that you've always wondered about that you'd like us to tackle, then please do put it in the comments below the videos. We do go through all of them. I will now leave the rest of you to get back to your phone and uh, rudely ignore your loved ones. Unless you're watching this on a phone and then carry on. Now, historically, each new video format has required more and more pixels. So if you bought a DVD in the late 90s, you're going to get an image of up to 720 pixels across by 576 high. That means